Professor Blauer is back and here too, I'm so excited to work on this with you because this PowerPoint is on travel. And as you may know, I'm someone who really loves uh, international travel. I've been to over 110 countries. And this time, looks like we're going to visit Pacifica Bay. And so let's dive right into it and learn more about PowerPoint Chapter 3. So to start, you need to make sure that you enable uh, editing so that you can work on the PowerPoint. So click that button to begin. And voila. Now, what you want to do next is up at the top, click on the Design tab. And under the Design tab in the Variants group, over here, click on the More button. And we're looking for Colors. And scroll down to Blue-Green to change that to, well, Blue-Green. OK? And so stay on that Design tab. And what you'll want to look for up at the top over on the right hand side, Design tab, Customize Group, click on Format Background. And from there, you want to click on the Picture or Text Fill, okay, and look around. Scroll down just a little bit, and where it says Texture, go ahead, click on that button. And the one we're looking for is Water Droplets. Blue tissue paper. Oh, looks like that's it right there. Water Droplets. And I'm just going to make sure. Yep, water droplets texture and change the pa uh, transparency to 50%. So again, picture or texture fill, click on texture, click on water droplets. And here, transparency, you can either toggle it like me, which takes a little longer. Ah, oh, so close. Or you can just type in 50 right there, okay? And that's how slide one should look. Next order of business, it says uh, for step number four, select slides two through four. Apply a solid fill to the background of the selected slides. Last column, third color. All right, so go back to PowerPoint, click on slide number two, and then hold down your shift button and click slide number four. Shift will select the range two through four. Alternatively, you could press control and click two, control click three, control click four. That'd be command for a Mac, and then you can move on to the next step. So with slides two through four selected, we still should have our format background tab still open. All right, if not design tab, customize group, format background, we do want to use a solid fill, which is already selected. The color that we want, so go ahead and click on the paint bucket, and it's the last column, third color. So last column, down one, two, three, blue, gray, accent five, lighter 60. Go ahead and click that. Looks great. And then um, we are then on to step number five, worth four points. Looks like step six, we'll be typing a bunch, but we need to hide the background graphics. So this one's fun. All right, let's hide the background graphics. So go ahead and sl uh, select slide two so that only slide two is selected. You again should still have your format background pane open. And what you wanna do for this step is down here, um, click on hide background graphics and then you're good to go, right? Hide background graphics. Now for the next step, uh, on slide number two, we're going to insert a table with three columns and four rows and then search for that style and enter in the data. So if you want to insert a table in PowerPoint, that's the button right here in your placeholder. Click the insert table button and it's asking for three columns, which are vertical, and four rows, which are horizontal. You'll press OK, and voila, we've got a table inserted into our PowerPoint. Really handy. Then um, uh, we've got the design, a table design tab open in the table styles group. Click the more button. And it wants us to do the medium style three, accent three, which from memory, yep. So again, click the more button. Go down to medium, and that would be the fourth column, the third row, medium style three, accent number three right here. Select it. Looks great. And without any further ado, we're going to type in the following information. So um, just a second while I go ahead and do that. This will be uh, fairly quick, but it'll be trip type. I press tab to go over um, one cell. 
Uh, the tab button brought me here, day one, tab day two. Make sure that you capitalize everywhere you're supposed to capitalize, otherwise you will get marked down. You get three submissions, but I don't want anybody to get marked down. So type it exactly as you see it on step number six. This would be Adventure Seeker, tab, kayak and snorkel, tab, nature preserve hike, tab, family dash friendly with no spaces, tab, Pacifica Bay Zoo, tab, beach day and horseback riding, tab, arts and culture, and that's actually an ampersand, so it'd be shift seven, shift seven for the ampersand, that's that symbol, um, arts and culture, tab, Pacifica Bay Art Museum tab, Artisan Walk. Okay, this time I'm going to misspell walk and put in wall. Do not do this if you want the points. I just want to show you at the end of this video how to improve upon your score. All right, so once we have all that typed in, you've got 10 points. Voila, we're going to resize the table for step number seven so that the lower edge extends to three inches on the lower half of the vertical ruler. All right, well, let's check and see. And from the last project, I do have the ruler up here. If you don't have the ruler, that'd be on the View tab. In the Show group, you can deselect or select the ruler. I always have mine on, all right? Let's go back to the Home tab, and I'll show you how to do that step. And here's another fun one, yeah? So go back to your PowerPoint, and uh, make sure that, again, you've got your rulers uh, visible. Select the table, and that center uh, selection handle right there, click and drag while looking at the um, vertical ruler on the left-hand side. Notice that red um, kind of dash as I move up and down. It says we want to drop it right at the three-inch mark, so right around here. There we are, almost right about there. If it marks me down, I'll show you how to improve your score. Awesome. Then you'll also notice at the top you've got a table design and layout tab. Go ahead and click on layout. First thing that we're being asked to do is to distribute the rows. So again, that's the layout tab, um, the uh, cell size group, and click on distribute rows. It'll tell you what that is. Notice how that spreads it out very evenly. We also need to, in the alignment group, center vertically and center it. And here's the uh, shortcut. Uh, control or command E to center the text. Just like that, we're on to the next step. And we are on step number eight. So in the table, change the font size of the first row of text to 24. First row of text to 24. Be sure to um, select the text in the first row here, or just select that first row. Go to the Home tab and uh, in the font group, click the um, font size button, and we're going to increase the size to 24. Yep. And then up in the table design tab up at the top, click it. <clears throat> and then in the effects, so again, table design tab, table styles group, click the effects button. Scroll down to cell bevel, and the one we're looking for is called divot, which is the one in the bottom left. Excellent. Starting to look great. Everything's coming together really well. And so now that we've done this for eight points, we need to animate the picture using the wipe entrance on slide number three. All right. So go ahead, click on slide number three, have a look around. Here's our picture. Here's our bulleted list and the title. And so go ahead and select the picture and notice how uh, this changes our options up at the top, right? Click off the picture. I'm sorry, click off the picture, click back on it. Click on the animations tab up at the top. The one we're looking for is called wipe. Okay, I see it right here. You could also click down here on the more button to see all the different options, but there it is right there and it'll show you um, how it works. And it also shows a number right here to indicate that there is an animation. All right, so while we're still in the animations tab over on the right in the timing group, you want it to start after previous. And the duration, we want to change 
to um, one point, sorry, one point zero zero. Okay, and then we need to make some changes to the bulleted list. So what you'll do is go ahead and click on the bulleted list. You don't need to select the text. Just make sure the rotation handles are there. And then, just like before, um, we're in the animations tab and we are looking for split. Now, I see it right here. Um, and if you hover over, it'll tell you what to do. Um, but just to be sure, click on the more button, have a look at all of them, select split, and notice the preview, really handy. Um, and then it changes the numbers. It'll let you know which will happen first. Now, still in the animations tab, in the animation group, go ahead and please click on effect options and we'll change it from vertical in to vertical out and notice the animation changing. Okay, so the effect starts in the middle and reveals the text outwardly. So that's how we've changed it from the last one. Um, next order of business, we're going to go to slide four. We'll insert a clustered column chart. All right, let's see what slide four looks like really quick. Visitor patterns by season. Not a lot to it yet. What you'll do is on slide four in the placeholder here, click on insert chart. Perfect. And so it looks like it's already there for us. There's our clustered column chart. Excellent. And then click OK. And what will happen when it loads, it'll open up this um, Excel worksheet right here. And so the first order of business here is we're going to insert some data. So in row number one, beginning in cell B1, that would be Bravo 1, you'll type in year one. So instead of series one, type in year one, tab, year two, tab, year three. Now in row two, beginning in cell alpha two, notice when I press tab, it goes immediately to alpha two. We'll change the category to the season. So this first season would be spring, tab, type in 75,600, tab, 72,300, tab, 81,460, tab down to cell alpha three, A3, type in summer, tab, oh, pardon me, I'd get marked down for that, S-U-M-M-E-R, tab to Bravo three, where we type in 105,300, tab 128, 730, tab um, 143,600. Be sure to make sh be sure to check your numbers because if they're incorrect, that's going to change your clustered column chart down below, and your bars and your graphs and your numbers and your data uh, will be incorrect, and it's not going to do as much good here. So, um, be uh, when using Excel, be extremely careful that you have uh, typed in the right formula, the right numbers, and that everything checks out because one simple mistake early on can lead to a lot of problems later on down the road. Here in cell A4, alpha 4, I'm typing fall. Before I press tab, the number is 35,900. No commas necessary. 58,300 is in cell Charlie 4. And then in delta 4, we're putting in uh, 58,320. Check my numbers. Tab, category 4 will be changed to winter. Tab 41600, tab 58430, 58430. Um, and then the last one, Delta 5, and what it says is when you type in this last one, 67300, we press enter. We've been pressing tab this whole time. Okay, so this is an important part of the step. In cell D5, as in Delta 5, type in 67300 and press enter. Six. Seven, three hundred, press enter, and then we're in business, all right? Everything's there down below, and we're on to step number 11, which is worth another 10 points. And from here, all you need to do is uh, go ahead and close the Excel spreadsheet as such. And then for uh, step number 11, we need to apply the chart style eight. So up here at the top, we're on the chart design tab. You can click the more button to see all of them in here. And we'll look for, there it is. It's the very last one on the first row. That is style number eight. Go ahead and click it. 
It's asking us to remove the chart title element. So click this chart elements button and you can just deselect the chart title to make that go away. Now we need to make sure that the uh, chart is selected as such and click the animations tab. The one we want is called wipe. And here it is right up here. You can see all of them by selecting the more button to see all of these effects. But here it is right there and go ahead and click wipe and notice how it wipes from the bottom to the top and puts in this one right here on the top left. Yeah, um, it's asking us to uh, change the effect options to by series. So again, stay in the animations tab in the animation group, click the effect options button and down here in the sequence area, click on by series one, two, three. Notice how that worked, right? Pretty cool. Now. We're going to move to step number uh, 12, and this is worth a grand total of zero points, um, but we're going to do it anyways because we follow instructions. Um, <laughs> uh, let's see here. Um, it says apply the style one background to this slide only. All right. So after clicking slide five, go up to the design tab. And in the variance group, you can uh, select the more button right down here. And what you'll do is go down to background styles and hover over. And this is really important. You see, you see style one right here and you want to right click and then click on apply to selected slides. OK, notice how that only changed slide number five, right? This is a fun one. So what we're going to be asked is to insert a video, which we should have in our files already. So the slide five is still active and you can close that format background pane to have more screen real estate here. Go ahead and click the insert tab. And over in the media group on the far right, you'll see a drop down for video to insert video. And we have it right here on our device. And let's see here. Downloads, 3G travel. And there it is. Select it, insert it, and there's our video, right? Now what we need to do is we'll change the video height and got it. Thank you for the tip. We want to change the height of the video to six inches. Press enter. And from there, it's asking us to use the align center and align top option. So I'm wearing our video format tab. In the arrange group, click the align button and we want to align center. And I'm assuming middle align top, pardon me. Always read the instructions thoroughly or you can make a mistake just like that. We'll align it to the top. All right. And then once we're done, once we're done with that, we're being asked to apply the simple beveled rectangle video style. Well, we're still here in the video format tab in the video styles group. Click the drop down right here on the more button. And we're looking for simple beveled rectangle style, simple beveled rectangle. All right, so let's look around for it. That's a bevel perspective. Bevel rectangle. And this is something that you may find yourself doing simple bevel rectangle. It says, let me make sure simple bevel rectangle. Well, we found the beveled rectangle. I'm just making sure. And notice how I'm going around to all of the different options, hovering over them to see the name of them. It's a good strategy for um, learning what everything is here in um, PowerPoint. Center shadow rectangle, soft edge rectangle, Beveled frame, simple frame, simple frame, slope beveled, outer shadow rectangle, flow rectangle. We're still looking for it. Rounded, beveled, beveled rounded rectangle. And I'll get back to you as soon as I find it, eh? And alas, it was the first one. I was going right past it. So, um, go ahead. It's right in here. Simple beveled rectangle. That's the very first one we're looking for. So select that. And that is 12 points. So then step number 14 
asks us to go ahead and click the playback tab, change the video options to start the video automatically. So have a look for that. Start, it's defaulted here in our video options um, group to on click, uh, to start and click sequence. We wanna change that to automatically. And then we're going to learn how to trim the video. So what you'll do is in the playback tab here, in the editing group, you'll click on trim video. And it wants us to cut out a lot of it actually. Um, so in the end time spot right here, uh, make sure it says zero, zero, colon, zero, nine. And that'll tell us um, this should end at the nine second mark, yeah? All right, and then it wants us to, um, and this is important, uh, if you'll be sending this file, uh, or any PowerPoint file for that matter, we wanna compress it. So go ahead, click the file tab and the info button. And right here first is the compress media button and you'll scroll down to standard, yeah? And let the computer do the work. If you're on a Mac, note, if you're on a Mac and it says this on the directions, um, you can just skip this step. It's not, a, it's not an available feature um, available to Macintosh users. So Mac users, just skip it. And if, you're, uh, if you have any points that are taken away, I will give them right back to you. All right, so um, on slide number six, it wants us to hide the background graphics. So let's jump into it. You're welcome to go ahead and close this. It says our compression is complete and we saved a whole megabyte and a half. Well done. Uh, you can press the back button to go back to our PowerPoint and we'll click on slide number six. We look forward to you to come. We, <laughs> I sure tried to read that. We look forward to you. Wow, long day. We look forward to welcome you to our city. Say that five times fast. Um, what you're gonna wanna do for this one is hide the background graphics. So go ahead, click on the design tab and have a look around really quick. Format background button. Have another look and right over here is a button that has us hide the background graphics. And notice it didn't do much, but it took away that um, dark uh, vertical segment on the right-hand side of our page. So make sure that you click on hide background graphics. Then what we need to do is format the slide background by inserting a picture from your downloaded project files. All right, well, let's have a look for it. What you'll do, is um, keep the design tab open and keep the format background pane on the right hand side open if it for whatever reason got closed. Um, in the design tab over in the customized group, you can click on format background, make sure those background graphics are hidden and then click on picture or texture fill. And we've got this picture that's in our files, right? So under picture source, click the insert button and we are going to go from a file and I'll go to my downloads folder and go to 3G travel. And in here is just a lovely photo. I'm gonna click once. Now I believe you can click twice to insert it, but I'll click once and then click on the insert button. And voila, check that out. Now we have this beautiful coastal drive that is, well, I won't get into photography. I was about to make a note about the lack of use of rule of thirds, um, but this is a PowerPoint class. so. Um, look that up if you're interested, rule of thirds. I do like about this slide how they have the text in the above the horizon on the top left. And so I think that that is good uh, design right there. Um, yes, we got the picture inserted. And now this is step 15, by the way, for six points. You need to make sure, don't forget to set the transparency to zero. So either click in this area and type in zero or click this here and then just toggle it all the way to the left, right? And so notice this is fully transparent. This is becoming translucent and this is 0% transparency, just like a wall or a beautiful photo welcoming you to our city. So that's six points. You're at 98 out of 100 right now. For the last bit, what we need to do is insert, there's your hint, a header and footer in the on the notes and handouts okay um so this should be familiar by now but if not that's all right um it's good to go through the motions it's good to um, focus on the fundamentals um so that it becomes uh, second nature 
right? And so um, if you know how to do this bit, feel free to end the video right now. Uh, insert the um, header and footer and type in those things that it asks. But if you want to stick around, I'll do it here with you. So um, we're here on the insert tab on slide number six. And over in the text group, I see header and footer. Go ahead and click that. It says in the notes and handouts tab, which is the second one here under header and footer, we need to include the date and time, update it automatically, which is automatically selected here. Um, but do please be sure to check that on your end. And we need to include the page number. Looks like it's already here, but I'll toggle off, toggle back on to make sure that it is there. And also notice under preview, how it makes the changes on the bottom right here in the preview. In addition to the page number, we need to include a footer with the text uh, 3G underscore travel, capital T on travel. Make sure it's spelled correctly. And then uh, we need to display the document properties. So we can go ahead and apply to all because we're done in here. And you're not going to see anything on this end, um, but it is indeed there under the hood of the car, if you will. The car being PowerPoint and this being whatever you, <laughs> whatever you're working on in the car. Uh, I should have thought that analogy out sooner. You can you finish the analogy for me. There's, there's some homework. Um, display the document properties. So click on the file tab. Uh, click on the info button. You'll see our document properties over here. On the right hand side, we're going to tag this so that if you are searching on your computer um, for travel or tourism, uh, just like a hashtag, um, you will then be able to find this file if you, for instance, down um, using the um, search function, the magnifying glass, whatever they call it these days on Windows, I use Mac primarily, um, but if you search for your file, however you do so, um, you should be able to find it searching for travel and tourism. Click off of it. Be sure to save it. And our very last step is going to be uh, to go into my lab IT and upload it. So this is the chapter three PowerPoint. I'm excited for this. You can, uh, if you're in the 161 section, you can ignore the dates here. I do teach two sections of PowerPoint. Um, this is for 3G. Go ahead and click in there. And bear with me just a quick minute. It's my lab. You know how it goes. So we've downloaded the materials. We worked on the assignment on our computer. Time to upload it and get a grade for it. So this was the file I've been working on right here. Click upload. Wait for it to say success, which all of you are. It's taking an extra second. I wonder if my video is getting a little bit glitchy right now. Still uploading. Bear with me a moment. As soon as this says success, you're ready to submit it for grading. Go ahead and click that button. Kudos, our file's been submitted. Splendid. This will refresh. It'll say pending. But if what you can do is click the context menu, these three vertical dots. Click that. Go to view submissions. Bear with it just a second while it takes its time. And there we go. All right, 99.7. I'm thinking that point three is where I made that spelling mistake early on. So what you can do is click in that area right there, kind of in that blank area next to your score, and you can scroll down. And that's right. Yep. So you'll notice here I, I spelled walk, W-A-L-L, -L, and it took off a third of a point. All right. If you press this drop down right here and have a look, it'll tell you exactly um, where you made the mistake, which I had pre-planned, and it said the text was not set to artisan walk. All right. Now, it doesn't give you any more detail than that. I can tell you I spelled walk incorrectly, but you'll then have to go and work on your assignment again and re-upload it. And as long as you're above a 90%, I will get you full credit on these assignments. Again, just a note that we have this live comments report right here in which you can download uh, your PowerPoint file. Uh, what it'll do, what my lab IT will do, is it will then have a look at your... Um, it will look at your... Um, file itself and will leave you uh, comments and um, notes on your PowerPoint file, the one that you submitted, and uh, how to then improve upon your score, which I think is really handy. Um, so you got a few ways to uh, reflect on your work, to improve your work. One is right here, the scorecard detail or the markup report. 
then you've got your live comments report right there to fill in some of the blanks. So um, from from uh, me and Beethoven, uh, we'd, and, and I guess the um, word as well, <laughs> I'd like to say thank you for following us along on PowerPoint Chapter 3. Keep up, <laughs> keep up the excellent work. I'm going to take a break. These things are, these are, these are a challenge to make, but a good teacher enjoys a challenge. Thanks for everything, y'all. Keep learning.